Hello again. So now we're going to do this example, okay? Let's read it together first. Jessica's classroom test three scores follow a normal distribution with an average score of 85 and a standard deviation of 2. What score represents the 98th percentile? Okay, so first of all, let's let S represent the distribution called uh, the scores of test 3 in Jessica's class. And they tell us that it's normally distributed, right, with a mean of 85. Because remember, the mean is just another way of saying the average. So here, average square of 85, so mean of 85, and with a standard deviation of 2. Okay? And the question is, what is, the, what score would represent the 98th percentile of this distribution? Okay, so what I want you to remember, what I want you to recall for a moment is what exactly we mean when we say a percentile, okay? So we recall, now here, this is like um, not a formal definition, but it captures the idea of a percentile. And for example, in previous situations, we have calculated the percentile of discrete data sets where we have a list of number of numbers and we want to find you know whether a certain value is a certain percentile um, of that data set or which value would represent the let's say in this case 98th percentile of that data set but here in the case of normal distributions we're going to apply uh, a different technique okay because it's a different situation this is not a list of data points we have a distribution that we want to find a percentile of okay but before we do that, I do want to recap this rough notion, okay? Because this is going to be foundational to the way we're going to set up this problem. So a value is a p percentile if it is greater than or equal to p percent of the data points, okay? So in our case, a value will be a 98th percentile if it is greater than or equal to p per, to 98 percent of the data points, okay? Now let's draw the this uh, normal distribution as we've been doing before. It's always important to draw this distribution because that's going to help you to understand what's happening. Okay, okay. And we know the mean is 85, so we know that the 85 is right here somewhere. Okay. And, okay, the 98th percentile will be the value of the distribution. We know that the values of the distribution line up here somewhere, such that it is greater than or equal to 98% of the other values. What does that tell us? So it'll probably be here somewhere because it'll be further this way because we know that the area from here all the way to here is 0.5. So if I go further, it'll be bigger than 0.5, right? And in particular, let's label this value as like um, T as a test score, right? And let's call it T sub 98 to mean that it's like the 98th percentile of this uh, distribution of test scores, okay? But if it's bigger than 98% of the, of the other values, what does that mean? Well, we can translate that into the following criteria. We can translate that into saying that the area shaded to the left must be 0 0.98. Okay. That's interesting. Now, we don't know what that is in terms of this distribution, but... We do know what it is in terms of the standard normal, right? So this will be our values for our, for our distribution of test scores. And underneath it, I'll put my values that would correspond to the standard normal. Of course, the mean would still be zero, of course. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look for what value of Z will give us 0.98, uh, will give us uh, area 0.98 less than that value of z. And if you notice, this is exactly a kind of question we asked previously, but just dealing with the standard normal. And and so I gave that uh, discussion first as a prelude to these kind of practical problems. Okay. Okay. So in other words, what are we doing? We want to find the, sta the z, we want to find the z such that 
the probability that the standard normal takes on a value that is less than that particular z is equal to 0 0.98, okay? Okay, okay. Ah, okay, here it is. Now again, we're gonna use our standard normal table. So we're gonna get as close as we possibly can. So I'm looking here at my right hand side of my table, okay? 0.972632, okay, it's the next line. Ah, okay, here, 0 0.9793, 0 0.9798, 0 0.9703. Uh, okay, if you notice, this is 0 0.0002 away. This is 0 0.0003 away. So it'll be right in between these. So it'll be 2.05. And then since this one is 6, what's in between that? 0 0.055. Right, so 2.055. Let me make a brief, let me, so if we were using a calculator, we could get a more exact value, okay? But when we're using the table here, what I, what I want you guys to have noticed is that here, let me just make this clear for us here. Let me make this little brief discussion here. We saw that if we go to 2.05, the probability, the cumulative probability that the normal distribution takes on values less than that particular z was 0 0.9798. Um, and over here at 2.06, it was 0 0.9803. Now, it, now, usually the way you estimate it is you uh, see which value is closest to the area of interest. But in this case, um, so, I mean, strictly speaking, we could have picked 2.06. But really, two point, I mean, but really 0 0.9800 is really roughly between these two, almost in the middle, right? So what I did was to get this value, I added these two and divided by two, okay? So if you use your calculator, you will see that 2.05 plus 2.06 divided by two yields you the value 2.055, okay? Okay. And I know what you're thinking now. You're thinking, that's great, David. What, how is that going to help us? We know as we know we know that if we were looking at the standard normal, we now know that the value 2.055 represents the 98th percentile for the standard normal. But that doesn't tell us anything about our particular distribution dealing with um, dealing with the test scores in uh, Jessica's classroom. But here's where we're gonna exploit this uh this relationship i mean here's where we're going to exploit this what we have been doing when we deal with normal random variables is we've been using the z-score to take a value from some normal distribution and mapping it onto the standard normal so that we can calculate probabilities now we're going to do the reverse okay we know a standard normal value that we know satisfies the property we want and we want to find out what value in the normal that we are interested in has that same property. Okay, so I want you to watch me here. If I have z equals to x minus mu over sigma, I want to now solve for this x. I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma. So I'm going to get sigma z, sigma times my z score is equal to x minus the mean. I'm now going to add the mean to both sides, okay? And that's going to yield for me, okay, that if I look at this x, this x is left by itself, it's going to equal to sigma z 
plus mu. In other words, plus the mean. And so what that tells us is that we can take a z value of interest, a value from the standard normal curve that satisfies the property we want, and we can transform it to a value of the to a value of the normal distribution of interest to us at the moment, in this case, Jessica's test scores. Okay? So let me copy that formula over here. And instead of writing x, I'm going to write t98 because that represents the, that's the variable we have chosen to represent the, <coughs> the quantity of interest to us. So t98 will equal to sigma times z plus mu. Now in our case, we know what our sigma is. It's 2, right? We know what our z is. 2.055. And we know what our mean is, 85. Okay? And so then, we're going to use our calculator for this calculation. Okay? Eighty nine point eleven. Okay. Okay. So we are now in a position to answer the question posed to us originally. And what is the answer? A score of eighty nine point eleven represents the ninety eighth percentile. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this example, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much.